So far, we made it clear that in order for a company to transition from privately owned equity to public equity, it must hold an IPO. And to remind you of something that I said in the past that might be helpful, the name Initial Public Offering is self-explanatory. Initial, that is very first time, and if you add to that the words Public Offering, the very first time the company offers its shares to the public and not just to private investors. So every single company you see listed on the New York Stock Exchange, or the London Stock Exchange, or any other public stock exchange, at one point in its lifetime, held an IPO in order for its shares to subsequently trade on that stock exchange. But what does an IPO entail? The IPO is typically organized with the assistance of an investment bank or a syndicate of investment banks. And by syndicate, I mean a group of investment banks collaborating to complete the process involved in order for the IPO to take place. In case you are wondering why would a syndicate be needed, one possible answer is that this allows investment banks to spread the risks involved in the IPO. So if something goes wrong, no single investment bank would bear the cost. They would do it collectively. Whenever there's a syndicate involved, there's also what is called lead underwriter. This lead underwriter is the investment bank that undertakes most of the responsibility among the investment banks that form the syndicate. That's why they would lead after all. Moving on, the investment bank or the syndicate acting on behalf of the company that wishes to go public will deal with the legal issues involved and will eventually submit to the regulatory authority the prospectus for approval. If the prospectus is approved, it will be provided to potential investors. And if we were to look at things from a US perspective, this regulatory authority is the Securities and Exchange Commission, commonly referred to by its initials as the SEC. Now, what is the prospectus? This is the legal document that's supposed to contain the information that an investor would need in order to decide whether she should invest in the company shares. In fact, Every security to be issued for public trading needs a prospectus, not just shares of stock, but also bonds, for example. So this legal document includes a lot of details. To give you an idea, it includes information on the individuals running the company. In other words, the company's management. How the company plans to use the funds it wishes to raise through the IPO, and the price that the shares will sell at when the IPO takes place. This price is known as the offering price or offer price. You can view this offering price as the starting price for trading. And the reason I say starting price is because shortly after the IPO takes place, the shares will start to trade on the public exchange and you can expect the price to move up or down depending on what the market believes is the true value of the shares. I will close this video with a reference to another video I prepared in the fixed income module section. That video was titled, Bonds, a more concrete definition and the issuing process. In that video, from a certain point onwards, I provided an overview of the process involved to issue bonds. I would suggest that you watch that video and try to draw parallels between the IPO process and the bond issuing process.